So if there's anything I think that um, separates me from some other teachers is um, I'm not the type of teacher that's going to yell and scream and get crazy. If, if anything, I teach seriously with a sense of humor. Um, I would never ask the students to do an exercise that I wouldn't be willing to do myself. With the eulogy exercise, um, you know, there's been times when I've had four classes, so I've gotten up there four times and done it. And for some of them, um, I mean, even if some people are out there saying, eulogy, I've done the eulogy exercise. Not like I've done have them do it. I put a spin on it. It's different. Um, but, yeah, I, I get up there and do it myself. I think it's important that I can't just ask you to be vulnerable and I'm not willing to do it myself. And not just that, I better be able to do it myself. If I'm teaching it, it can't be just theory, I don't think. I should be able to do it. I, you know, I should be able to practice what I preach. And I should be willing to do it. And what I found from getting up and do, doing those uh, exercises, many times the first one to do it, is it's a nice way to break down barriers and um, earn uh, the student's trust. So I don't know... Uh, uh, of any teachers that, that do that as well. And I've taught in schools where other teachers have tried to uh, persuade me not to do it, that I shouldn't go up there. It's like, why? You're afraid your, your class is going to want you to get up there? Um, so, and uh, I think I'm pretty good at um, bringing out the essence of each individual student and seeing things in them that they don't see and helping them realize their potential. Or at least, it depends on how long I'm with them. I'm not going to say their full potential, but bring up part of their potential and tap into that and go off. And I think I'm I'm good at... uh, empowering my students and not make them feel like a victim of the system. And I think I'm a good example of what persistence, love of craft, love of this art form looks like what you're willing to give up in pursuit of this dream. And why would anybody continue to do it when all common sense would say, maybe you should be doing something else with your life. Because you're not, you know, I don't own anything. I, have my, I own my car, but I don't own anything, really. Um, I've had two marriages. Um, I've seen, um, spent a lot of time by myself in my imagination. Um, but what a great way to, 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 to spend your life. I mean, if it was all over tomorrow, um, everyone can look at me and say, well, he, he, you know, he lived his life doing what he, want, what he loved. He played his whole life. You know? um, I think it's important to take risks. And even that, even in, you know, I'm not, if there's anything I think that maybe stands out, I'm an example of what I teach. I don't just say, this is what I think you should do. I don't just say, I think you should go out and make your own movies. I don't direct and write. I'm doing it too. So it's coming from a really strong place. I see the value in doing it instead of complaining about why you're not working. So I think if there's things that make me successful as a teacher is you can look at me and say, he practices what he preaches. He's not just saying it. He's struggling along with the rest of us. Except he's not doing the on-camera workshops or the casting director workshops and those other things. 